Hey there, Boardroom Podcast listeners. The Boardroom International Surfboard Show presented by U.S. Blanks is coming up this October, the 12th and 13th in Del Mar, California. And this year, we're honoring as our icon of foam, Bob McTavish. The Boardroom features a large trade show hall filled with the entire surfboard building and surfboard manufacturing industry. It's a hard good show. Surfboards, wetsuits, leashes, fins, gear, wax, travel accessories, wetsuits, board shorts, sunscreen, basically everything you need to actually ride waves. Oh, and foil gear too. Lots of foil exhibitors this year. All under one roof, October 12th and 13th at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Best in show this year at the Boardroom Show. The category is Twinser. And the Best in Show board build-off is sponsored by Go Fast Campers. And Go Fast Campers is going to have a litany of their product on site at the Boardroom Show. And we're super excited to include them as the sponsor of the Best in Show board build-off. And the podcast also sponsored by the California Gold Surf Auction. 48 curated and vetted vintage and collectible surfboard lots on the auction block in mid-October. California Gold Surf Auction Fall of 2024 masterpieces. As you may recall, when we left off part one of the Paolo Roberto Ciamarelli surfing village origin story, Paolo had finally found his paradise, a perfect wave in front and plenty of really good waves, rights and lefts, all within a five to 20 minute boat ride. He had secured land. He had built a boat eight by three. That's meters, meaning 24 feet long, eight feet wide, more or less. But he was broke and living meagerly, but he was surfing and plotting the development process for his new surf camp. But as you may recall, as we left part one of his story, Paulo had crashed his boat, his money, his passport, and his return ticket out of Indonesia had all been stolen. In a matter of hours, Paulo went from eating delicacies on a massive charter boat to penniless and without documents. His dream was turning bad, and it was about to get worse with jail cells, broken promises, and Indonesian bureaucracy moving at a snail's pace. So we pick up here on a special edition of the Boardroom Podcast with Paolo Roberto Ciamarelli, part two of the Surfing Village origin story. Let us begin. So uh, we're continuing uh, we're con- the story here. And Paula, you were telling me that you j- had just crashed your canoe into the reef. And the next morning you looked for your st- Your money and your passport, your photocopy of your passport. Some other things were stolen too. What was going through your mind when all your stuff was stolen? Like this is pretty much like everything that you had that's of material value, right? Yeah. First was a boat. You know, okay, it was small, but it was not a canoe. Okay. uh, Come on. It was a a boat. It was eight by three. Yeah, eight by three. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a canoe, but it was a boat. I can show you later the photo. I want to see photos. Yeah, Yeah, I have it. And uh, so I was pretty much like, what the hell now, you know? Four days later, the, the charter boat left, and I was alone, pretty much with nothing. And um, so I asked the owner of the land to make a, a, like um, ladders and, pu- and hang on the coconut trees in Bahazanias, saying that please return the documents, you know? The money, there was not much, and that was all I had, but... Uh, you know, I, I need my, my, my ticket out of Indonesia, my ATM card, my photocopy of passport. So he did, and he hang in few of the coconut trees and nothing. Two weeks later, they found my bag that was stole. Uh, floating. The bag that had all of the stuff yeah. in it. Floating on the ocean. And uh, so I was pretty much surviving with potatoes that the the old ladies were giving to me to survive you know yeah and um so i went to to tell because i have diesel enough to get to tell so i got my boat and i went to tell because there was a police station there and i have to do the report yeah so that's the only thing i think i could do so i did i went there i went to the police station and i told the story and the guy literally said to me, uh, come back tomorrow. I thought that was weird. 
So next day I went back, was another guy. So I did the same report again, like for an, like an hour, like it was a podcast of my situation. Yeah. And um, he listened and said, come back tomorrow. So on the third day I went back, same thing again. And it was another guy, and he said, "Come back tomorrow." I said, "What? What? What? What's the point, man?" Indonesia. Yeah. He said, "I'm not gonna go back tomorrow to say the same story." No, no. Tomorrow, the the boss, they call Kapores or Kaposek, which is the boss of the police. The police chief. Yeah, he will be here, so you do the report to him. So, all right. On fourth day, I went there. I told him again the story. And uh, he goes like, oh, yeah, okay, Mr. Polo, okay, Mr. Polo. We go, we go back to Duru, and we're going to um, get the guy that stole you. I said, ha, ha, thank you, but ha, 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 how? How are you going to do that? Oh, no, we are the police. We know how to do it. I said, all right, um, um, how are we going to get there? Are we going to speedboat off the police? Fantastic. And who is going to pay the petrol? Ah, uh, you, mister. So, uh, what part of I don't have a, a single cent you did not understand? On four days, I'm telling the same shit. And he goes like, okay, come back tomorrow. <laughs> it's not a joke. And uh, so I went back to this little shit place where I was sleeping. And but because they knew me and I was not paying, but it, I promised I was going to pay. On the way back, one of the locals there said oh mr polo come here come here there was four guys from jakarta they were looking after you and uh, my heart already started to pump so what the fuck is going on four guys from jakarta are out in the tello islands and they're looking for you exactly and they're on and they're in the tello yeah and i have no idea what what was all about it or who they were so when i got to the place there was four guys from jakarta and one of them come to me said um are you polo I said yes said is that your boat because it was anchoring near to the place i was sleeping so yeah that's my boat and they go like yeah you know we are from jakarta we are on a holiday and is that okay if you charter your boat for three days we just want to go around and swim and fishing would you be willing to charter a boat and take us and I go like, hang on, let me see my agenda. <laughs> <laughs> let me see what I got going on. And I actually did say that. <laughs> and I opened a little thing that's, oh, yeah, I, I'm available on those dates. So I don't remember how much I, I charged them for that. But it was money enough to survive for a little while. Yeah. So I was doing that. And then I went back again to the main center of Telo to get some food or whatever and I saw a friend of mine from Brazil his name is Javi he was there Javi, isn't, isn't that kind of random to just see a friend from Brazil and out in the middle of nowhere the uh, absolute un un unexpected because Javi actually was the guy when I was three months waiting for Diego to live in Rotin in Umbrella there was also those two Brazilians that we met there Javi were, well, it was one of them. Uh -huh. So I met the, this guy, Javi, for like a couple of weeks. He was not my friend, but I knew him. Yeah, from, from Nembr from Nembrala. Yeah. yeah. And I look at him. When I, you were at Felipe, Mo Felipe Pomar's place. Yes. Yeah. And I remember he said, Javi, what the fuck are you doing here, man? And he goes like, ah, you know, um, I heard you have a, a boat here in Telos. And I have a few friends that um, they want to come to do a surfing culture movie but they do not have we do not have money to charter a boat can we use yours and i said man fine and i told him all the story i said man you lucky that you found me here in tello i'm eight ten hours from here i'm in the south you just got really lucky to find me here and i told him the story and he goes okay let's go back to padang so I can send them a mail so they can come. So yeah, you guys pay the, the, the fuel and the food and I take you guys everywhere. And you guys can do the movie. And uh, all right, so. What about, why didn't, why didn't you ask him to also pay for your ticket back to, didn't you lose an airplane ticket in this whole deal? I, yeah, I had uh, my, my ticket out of Indonesia. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, where would you go? I go, 
was like through Singapore. So if I got to Singapore, what I was going to do there? I had no money. Okay. You know. So the ticket, losing the ticket wasn't that big a deal because you couldn't really use it anyway. Yeah, exactly. But it, legally, when you enter Indonesia, yeah. you got to have, yeah. yeah, it's part of one of your documents mm -hmm. that you are legally in Indonesia. Yeah. And uh, so we wait another week or two for a cargo boat from Telo to Padam. And we find the one and then we enter the boat and it was like 18 hours. And so there we were, me and Javi going back to Padan. I said, oh, yeah, and I, I can do the report in Padan because they have a proper police there. They might can listen to me. And um, just, man, just before we entered the harbor, I could see the harbor. And I saw this huge, man, it was a huge a speedboat from the Marine Army, Marine. Mm -hmm. And they stopped the boat just before he enters the harbor. And all those... Like the M Indonesian Navy. Yes, Indonesian Navy, that's what it was. Huge, man. It was almost The, the, the speedboat was almost the size of the, the cargo boat. So they stopped the cargo boat. And all those guys entered the boat with big guns, looking what the boat were bringing back from the islands to Padang which I never seen never happened before and um, so they were searching you know usually those cargo boats they bring like coconuts pigs people and uh, rice whatever it was yeah and they saw me and Javi on top and oh hello mister hello hello uh, where are you from from Brazil. Oh, Ronaldo, Ronaldinho. That was a World Cup time. Uh -huh, World Cup with Ronaldo. Yeah. So they were going, oh. Yeah, they all knew, knew yeah. Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, and those guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, he goes like, okay, Mr. Um, passport? He said, no. Um, ID? No. Any identification? No, nothing. But what happened? Oh, man, you know, I was in the alley. Uh oh, hang on. They stopped searching the boat get me and Harvey put on the Navy speedboat they moved you uh, they arrested you yeah they much. arrested they moved you from the from the charter from the uh, ferry the cargo boat and put you on the Indonesian naval vessel and now you're sounds like you're in trouble yes and now uh, we went straight to the police in Padang in Padang mm -hmm. And believe it or not, when we arrived at the, the when we arrived at the police station, the media, the Padam media was already there, newspaper, TV, and all that. And so the guys got me and Javi to an interview, and I explained again the situation. And um, say, so, okay, no, 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 jail. So me and Javi end up in jail. For not having documents. No. Harvey didn't have his documents? Harvey had only his photocopy of the, his passport. Mm -hmm. So, and then I find out, which is actually a good uh, advice to whoever want to travel to Indonesia. Wherever you go, you're supposed to have your, the original passport with you. So let's say you arrive in Bali and you want to go have for a surf trip in Lombok. And you leave your passport in Bali on an agency to security. That's what everybody does. But if the police catch you and ask for your original passport, even if you have a photo or a photocopy, then legally they can make trouble to you, legally. Yeah, if they want to. Yeah, yeah. if they want to. And um, so we went to jail, me and Javi. And uh, next day we are on the first page of the local newspaper. Two Brazilians got caught illegally in Indonesia, blah, blah, blah. And um, so now, at least me and Javi was in one cell alone. On the cell in front of us, there was around, I would say, 14, 15 kids from Myanmar. Look. Kids, yeah. children. Yeah. From, Mi from, from a different... Myanmar, yeah. Yeah, another on country. Top, yeah, it was on top of Indonesia. Yeah. And uh, between 14 and probably the older guy was like 21, mm -hmm. something like that. But one of them, they knew Bahasa. Mm -hmm. uh, they knew Indonesian language. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was actually they, they knew Mal 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 Malaysian language. Uh -huh. 
because they, they are pretty close and um, which they talk pretty much is pretty similar of Bahas Indonesia. Okay. So I was asking one of the guys, say, so you guys are in jail, why? Ah, because we were fishing and we crossed the line in the ocean that you cannot see. It. Yeah. And the marine caught us and put us in jail. So are you guys in jail because you were fishing and you couldn't see where the line in the ocean is between my, uh, Myanmar and Indonesia? Yeah, that's right. And um, how long are you guys going to be in jail for? We don't know. And I ask, how long have you been in jail, you guys? And they start to talk in Myanmar language between them. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, a year and a half. Oh, they've been there for a year and a half yeah. waiting to get yeah. some sort of and justice they, or whatever. And they were kids, man, you kids, know. Yeah. So I looked to her and said, man, we are, we are in big trouble. If they were fishing, and imagine us, we have no, no idea. So I got a, f um, uh, I borrow a, a, a phone, handphone. And I called the agency in Bali where my passport was to be extended. And I explained to them, look, can you send my passport and have his passport also? Please contact his agents and send our passport because we are in jail. So three days later, our passport arrived and the chief of the police called me and Harvey and said, okay, your passport's fine, your name is fine, your visa is fine you free to go I said thank you sir and when i went to get grab my passport he pulled back said no no no, no. you have to pay five million which was five hundred dollars i said sir i did the report all those days to you yourself and i don't have a single dollar even if i have money in the bank which i don't you can read in the report that you wrote yourself that my atm card also was stolen back to jail that's what he does so back to jail uh, so you didn't have the 500 dollars, so you went back to jail all right so and uh so we went back to jail i don't know how many more days we, we were there and then they call us back again the same guy and go like okay um they could see that they couldn't take a, a dollar out of us because we didn't have it, and then they figure out finally so okay here your passport you can go oh thank you sir he also again took it back and said hang on he opened my passport and have his passport and he put a stamp on it said you have you guys have three days to leave the country and get a new visa so but sir i still have four months left on my visa no no you have three days to leave the country so he demanded you have three days to get out of indonesia and get a new visa or uh, we, we will be deported deported so fair yeah anyway we got our passport and we have to leave now indonesia and get a new s social visa they call you come you come with two months and it can extend for four yeah that's why my passport was in bali because i had no time to do it so i pay for them in advance and they, they were doing that to me but to get a new social visa you need a sponsor or from indonesia himself or for our agents but we again we had no money and uh we have to leave the country in three days and you have no ticket and no ticket so the idea was have he contact his father so i knew have it just to to make it clear i knew have for a couple of weeks almost a year back or two so he contacted his father and borrow money to him and to me to get a ticket to Singapore so he could apply the visa there. That's what happened. He sent Harvey some money, so he just enough to buy the ticket to Singapore. We went to Singapore, and uh, there was this Muslim girl working there, but she was from Malaysia, so she talked in Bahasa. And uh, I made friends with her, like charging my phone and everything, and Harvey was like, man, 
I have a bad feeling. I have a bad feeling. He could not stop talking. I have a bad feeling. I have a so bad you feeling. befriended this Muslim girl from Malaysia, and Harvey feels he's got a gut feeling that this is a bad idea. Yes. No, bad idea. No bad idea. But just he, bad, he was feeling weird. He was, what didn't seem right. Yeah, because no, but the girl work on the immigration in Singapore. She was from. Oh, Malaysia. she was working at the yeah. immigration office yeah. where you were. Okay. And because you were were taking too long to our visa come, he was saying, "Man, I have a bad feeling. Bad feeling." And while I was trying to come with him down, I made friends with this girl that works okay. there. So his bad feeling was about if you were going to get a visa or not, not necessarily this girl. No, 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 about the girl. He, he have a bad feeling about the situation. I said, yeah. man, you, are, you are just came from the jail. We, we are stressed. Everything is going to be fine. But fair enough, the same girl that works there, she called me and said, Paulo, please, 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 please. Do not say a word or I can lose my job. But the police immigration from Padang, West Sumatra, already called us here in Singapore and told us to do not give you guys the visa. So now we are in trouble because now we are in Singapore, which was way more expensive and we couldn't even go back to Indonesia. So what are we going to do? And said, so Harvey, the only way is go to Indonesia via Bali and get the visa on arrival, which is good for 30 days, but it's an extendable. I said, man, it takes 30 days to get from Padang to tell. What are we going to do in Bali? I said, I don't know, but at least we are in Indonesia, not in Singapore. So again, he called his father, borrowed some money again to him and to me, and we got a ticket to Bali. And we got the visa on arrival with 30 days unextendable. And believe it or not. So you only get 30 days. Yeah. And you cannot extend. You cannot extend. Yeah. And um, believe it or not, day 28, Javi came to me and said, man, I met this guy, Indonesian guy, but my English is not good. His English is not good. My Bahasa, it doesn't even, it's nothing. Can you come and, and, and meet him and talk? Because I think he can help us. Okay, let's go there. So his name is Echo. What's his name? Echo. Uh -huh. And uh, he was planning on, in, on, on open um, uh, visa agents. He didn't have an agency yet, but that he was, was opening a visa agency. He, yeah, in Bali. But he hadn't quite done it yet. No, but no. he maybe wanted to help you. Somehow. Yes, he and might have been his first customers. Man, probably yes. But uh, his first customers couldn't even pay him. I told him the story. I said, man, we don't have the money because he have to make a sponsor letter. So we have to go back out of Indonesia and apply for the for the social visa with the sponsor letter that he was willing to give to us and willing to wait to we paid him back which he did so we use our ticket out of Indonesia which was Singapore but we could not apply there so he did the, the, the sponsor letter we went back to Singapore we knew we could not apply in Singapore so we got a train to Thailand <laughs> yeah and uh, you know my debt we we have his father was just getting bigger and didn't even know the guy yeah. and then we went to thailand we applied the visa it came out because they have no connection with Padang yeah. immigration so you, you did get your visa in thailand to and go harvey. back to indo yeah and harvey also and harvey also and then we got another train to malaysia and from malaysia we got a ferry to medan which is north sumatra we could not enter from to padang no. And from Medan, we got a bus, a bus from Medan to Padang. And then there we are. There was no ferry from Aceh over here? No, no, no. It was Medan is closer to, to, to Malaysia. Yeah. Okay. It's f and then uh, a bus. That was the nightmare. A that bus. sounds like a long bus ride. Yeah. So all that travel timing between, you know, yeah. it took almost like a month. So we got back in Padang. When we got back in Padang, Javi probably for like a month have been in contact with his friend that's supposed to come to do the movie the, the movie guys yeah. yeah and so we went to this man that was a, a hat, rat hole we were paying five cents a night the rats were bigger than my dogs <laughs> literally you're in a hell hole rat yeah. hole 
hotel in Padang. Yeah, and uh, I was I I went to crash. Harvey went to an internet shop to get a Coca Cola on the machine, and he slept. He fell asleep on the machine, laying on the machine like a beggar. And believe it or not, his friend, which was Homulu, Du, and Mario, arrived and found him <laughs> sleeping on the Coca-Cola machine as a beggar. You know the harbor? Oh, yeah, the, yeah, it was quite near the harbor, yeah, the where we are staying, yeah, close by. So but the it, three guys that are making the film randomly run into Harvey, who's asleep on the, like a beggar on the Coca-Cola machine. Believe it or not, yeah. after one month without, you know, them being touched. Yeah. They go like, a oh, fuck, let's go anyway. Yeah. So they went and found him as a beggar asleep on the Coca-Cola <laughs> machine. So Harvey came to the hotel and, Polo, 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 wake up. What, what happened? What happened? <laughs> More trouble? No, no, no. My friends from Brazil that's supposed to come, they found me sleeping on the, and they want to meet you. Said, oh, Harvey, that's not even a funny joke. No, it's not a joke. Let's go. So there, there the guys were. Do I already knew because uh, in, in Embrala, Harvey was with Stu, so I knew him. Yeah. And then Homo and Mario that I never yeah. met before. So we talked, said, okay, that's the plan. So we go back. We have to find a, a cargo boat to tell them my boat is there. Over a month, two months already there. Were you worried that your boat would be gone? No, because everybody knew me yeah. in Tello. And the boat was built in Tello, you know. Yeah, so yeah. everybody knew me, knew the boat. Yeah. Tello is a very safe place anyway. Yeah. Regardless, you know. Yeah. And um, so it, it took like three weeks to find a cargo boat to go to Tello. So you're in Padang for three more weeks? Yes. That sounds like a nightmare. Absolutely. And um, we found the boat and 16 18 hours later we are in tell and my boat was there in the same place same position and everybody run hey, let's go surface and hang on guys hang on a minute there was five of us we're gonna leave on that boat that's not like a a, a car a truck that you put your boards on top and let's go surfing man we're gonna leave on on that you guys were all five gonna live on your boat yes yeah eight by three <laughs> and um it's eight by three yeah, boat you yeah. get five people yeah. on surfboards and and film gear right yeah, like yeah. cameras exactly and they gear the the, the board cover the, the boards the the pelican cases everything and, man yeah. and they they bags everything and we need to live on the boat and food and everything so so look we have to work on the boat first first the engine was fine and no leaking on the boat but then we have to organize uh water collecting water from the rain so put a tap on 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 on, on the roof of the boat and then the pipes for two big tanks to collect rain water and buy a little stove and and pots and plates and yeah. fork anyway so it took us like three four days to organize the boat which we did and then i could start to take them that's not an earthquake, that's the guys walking. Uh, and then I start to take the guys in north of Telo. So it's still no latitude zero, no Telo Lodge, nothing there. So yeah. I was taking them everywhere, surfing. Like the missions wave, the little churches, the left. And, yeah. all, all, all those spots. And yeah. were fun, you know, those waves were very fun. Yeah. And um, just, just, we can, can you follow Bruno, can we? this side so um so i was taking the guy surfing there and mario he become really good friend of mine because he was willing to learn how to turn the engine of the boat which is manual you know was and uh take the anchor all the other guys were more like worrying and surfing and make the movie but mario was become like a partner on, on, on the ship on the boat and uh every single day mario mario you met mario no i've him? never met mario every single day mario was like oh so you have a land in the south said, yeah i do so you, you need a partner i said uh i might need it but i don't want one <laughs> because i already have one here walk away i'm gonna do on my own right and every day he was like 
so partner let's do it i want to be the partner so no mario no no okay after like a week or 10 days mario asked me every day i said okay mario that's the thing let's go there you see the land you see the wave and then we talk okay partner i'm on it so fuck this guy is crazier than me and we are doing he's, he's proving himself to you though like he's doing the work to he's learning about the engine like you internally you're going this guy's not a bum he's hel he's helpful absolutely and um as a person we are we are doing really well too yeah he was a great guy you know yeah we become friends and yeah. um so so okay time to go south which was on that boat you know it was like eight and hours but it took like 18 because you got a big storm on the middle of of the way which fill up our 2000 liters of rainwater anyway and uh we arrived here night time already it was getting dark so they didn't see anything so i went inside the bay throw the anchor and again the boat shake three times and said there is the waves tomorrow i thought so i wake up in early morning bring the boat here in front throw the anchor and mario was the first one to jump in the water <laughs> and everybody was watching and filming so mario paddled for the first wave he couldn't go on it paddled for the second one he couldn't go on it the third wave he paddled he there is on movie on, on video he take off straight bottom turn went to the leap turn on the leap just check turn drop again bottom turn and he got a bear all the way to tercera and this is the first wave that's ever been captured on film here yes yes probably yes it must be yeah yeah it must yeah. be yeah yeah oh, yeah definitely was. yeah it yeah. is yeah. that's cool and everybody was screaming and jump on the water everybody would jump on the water after that everyone's frothing yeah and then by the way, what year is this roughly? Two thousand and three, six. Oh, six. Two thousand yeah, five. I think. Yeah, I think I was here in like seven or eight. Well, no, here on surfing. No either. bombers. Oh, yeah, right. with with Mangalui. Oh right, yeah, yeah. 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 So that was two thousand and five. Yeah. Or six. Two thousand and five. I would say two thousand and five. No, he remembered two thousand five, or six, probably six, and um. And then say, okay, I cannot say not to him now. Say, okay, Mario, all right. So you want to be partner? Yes, yes, yes. So you have any money? No. So what the hell, man? Well, but you, you already have the land, yeah? Yeah. The wood is, is sitting there, yeah. So what is missing? So the well, couple of hammers, couple of hand saw, and nails. So I can afford that. All right. So he become a partner like that. He so he it. paid for the hand saws and the nails and the stuff and the, to get the yeah, building and, going. Yeah, and yeah. then he go, okay, let's build the bungalow. And the guy's still here, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Are you ever thinking about asking your your dad for money to help you with this? Not a chance. He Not couldn't a chance. even give me like a, a... Are you communicating with him? No, man. There is no internet. There is no okay, nothing. Right, right. Here. There was no phone, phone no mail. here. Nothing. So but did you want to communicate with yeah, him? Yeah, but I knew that he would not even right. Okay, do it. I understand. I I need like a, like a, a, a you're like a surf bum. Yeah, and uh, the time back on when we first started the, the podcast, I asked him for help to buy my, yeah. my car, my dream car. He said, "No, you do it yourself." Yeah, okay. I so, knew he wouldn't do it. Okay, I understand. Yeah, yeah. and um, so there's no other sources of money from your end. You you have no you have nothing. And Mario has a little bit of resources because he's got some money to buy these these hard goods that you need, nails and saws and stuff. Scott, I, I, I'm not only have nothing, I was already in debt. I have to yeah, pay in half his back, yeah. dad and father's back, yeah. and I had no money. And, and you owe on the land. Yeah, rent. Yeah. So Mario becomes your partner. Do you, do you, is it a handshake deal? It was a handshake deal, yes, yeah. exactly, yes. And uh, and um, Mario goes like, okay, let's build the bungalow. Say, hey, 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 have you ever built a table or a chair before? <laughs> no, I didn't. So neither do I. Said, well, but you, you, you have the project, yeah? Yes. So let's do it. Said, hang on. Let's do the, the toilet first, which is pretty much the same concept. It's a square and a pyramid on top. Yeah. And if you need to do, if we do end up doing any shit, 
the toilet's the place to do the shit anyway. Yeah. So we we build the toilet. So it's a hole in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. We build the toilet. You, you, know, you dig a big hole. No, we small we, hole. Yeah, but uh, you know, the, the, I'm talking the 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 building itself, the structure. Yes, which is I like square and the yes. and the roof. Yes. Which are square and a pyramid on the on the roof, and that was pretty easy. And did you do these palm fronds too on the first structure on the toilet? Did you or were you just doing straight wood? No, we we we, do, we did the, the the frame first. Yeah. And then we put it the the the, the roof ourselves. The palm it. fronds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We put it. And it works. And said, so, all right, and now you're going to do the How bump. did you learn to do all that? No. Did the locals teach yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, we watched the locals yeah, doing okay. it. Okay. And uh, but you buy oh, you the buy sheet uh -huh. and then you put yourself. I got gotcha. you. No, we, we didn't actually did yeah. the work. And Mario's funding all this? Yeah, no, no, we were owning the money. We never paid. Oh, you owed the money? Yeah. Somebody was lending you the No, yeah, someone was giving to us and we are promising to pay. Right, right. And um, the, the, the toilet, the structure of the toilet was fine. So, okay, now we are able to build the bungalow. Oh, yeah, right. So we start. So the square in the rooms was pretty easy. And it was no big deal because it's square six by six. And then comes the roof, which is a pyramid shape. Yeah. And that was a, that was a challenge because it was a big piece of wood that we have to put on top of the square you already you know large beams up. big beams yeah, heavy heavy two people yeah and uh, and then we call two guys to help us to stand we first we take like days to figure out how we gonna stand the pyramid on top so we find out a way but it was too heavy so you ask two guys which rama and lagaden they Local still guys. working here yeah, guys. after 20 years almost yeah. So we built the first bungalow, and um, as soon as we finished build the bungalow, my brother Nardelli came with a friend from Brazil, and Mario's cousin came with his friend also from Brazil. But they they both live in Australia. My brother and his friend live in Brazil, so that was our four four first guests ever. And how did you communicate with your brother and Mario's? friend to come stay here how did they know you were here because between those times we have to go to tell or have to go to Padang. Right, okay yeah and then from Padang we could use the email okay because it, we, we we it took like months so every time you're in Tello or Padang part of your reason for going there or not the reason but you use the internet you communicate with people well in Tello there was no internet or phone okay. also so we have to go to Padang. What about Tupajet? Could you just go to Tupajet and use? No, the there was no 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 transportation from here to Tupajet. Oh, okay. And there was nothing there, also. Yeah, there's nothing there. Yeah. yeah, that time we are talking about twenty years back. Yeah. And um, and you know, it took I don't know, six eight months to finish the first bungalow or more. I don't even quite remember. So my brother came. Yeah. So it was the four first guest we ever had. And they were, and we were eating on the local house, the wife of the owner of the land. So every single. Are you still eating rice and eggs, or have you? Is your diet upgraded to like? Yeah, when me and Mario start to to build, we upgrade for three million three minutes noodles, which we cook ourselves. What were you cooking? Three minute minutes noodles. Of oh, top ramen. Yeah. Three minute noodles. Yeah, okay. that one, you know. Big upgrade. A big upgrade, and uh, <laughs> I remember, the, yeah. I remember said, uh, you hungry today? Yeah, so make three packets for me. <laughs> we get the coconut, man. We got the coconut and, and, and graper the coconut and pretend there was cheese on top. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it was good times. And uh, I mean, I'm going to skip all the malaria and stuff because uh, is the, the, the well, same you, story. You got malaria? Some Tw people got malaria? 24 times. 24 times. Yeah. Yeah. Mario got malaria? Probably half dozen times. How did the malaria get eradicated? Man, you they say that you never get rid from malaria. Yeah. But uh, I somehow got it really yeah. off in Brazil with this witch girlfriend of my mom, which I didn't believe it. Yeah, at all. yeah, but uh, on the first two years I were here, and just to to clarify that before, 
this place was a malaria resort. Oh, so, so all wild grass and you know they they get the, the coconuts they open they take the meat and leave the shells so there's a little water in there so the oh, man that was a malaria resort a lot of mosquitoes a there. lot man a lot i was using mosquito repellent but man you sweat so much that it doesn't eventually matter. run away yeah and be especially because of our diet that was very 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 poor yes and um it took me uh, almost two one year or two to get the first time when I got the first time, the malaria comes back every month for two years. Oh man! For two years in a row, every month the malaria was coming back. I think I got four kinds of malaria and twenty relapses, because the malaria is like when it's in your in, in your body. When whenever your immune system goes down, the malaria comes back. Yeah, when you get a lower immune from bad diet or whatever, that you get attacked by the malaria. And the other thing was. You were still working and surfing, yeah, and working mental work because we are not abusers, yeah, and, and 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 physically working to carrying wood to to saw the wood by hand. So a lot of energy, a lot of energy is being expelled. So you're a little, you can be weak pretty quick. Oh uh, yeah, well, we are weak all all, all, all along, you know, yeah. uh, and surfing because the waves are pumping. Yeah. So for two years, man, that was my salary. Every month, the malaria was back. I, 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 at some some stage that I remember I went to Padam I was not in, in crisis of malaria I was all right I went to Padang and then I got dengue in Padang oh dengue fever dengue yeah. fever which is pretty much similar of malaria yeah so my immune system went down and the malaria comes back so uh -huh. I have dengue and fever uh -huh. and that was the time that I asked God to take me so yes, God to take you. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I literally, you were so weak. I literally said, just take me. It's no worth leaving. But then I remember my brother, my mom, and my father said that they're going to be devastated. Yeah. But I would go. Yeah. I had no doubt it, man. Yeah. You know, we are here sitting, drinking coffee, watching the waves, talking, breathing, looking at each other, looking around. That's the, our uh, that's our energy, energy life, right? That time that I have dengue and malaria, the energy life that we are having now, I have like 5% left. And the 5% was sweating, shivering, feeling as sick as you can imagine, headache, like a thousand knives going through your brain. And all you want to do is, is sleep and, and try to wake up better. So I was sleep. I thought I was sleeping for 18 hours it was just 20 minutes passed by. It was a nightmare, man. You don't wish that to anyone, to Hitler, you don't want to wish that. You are literally on the devil's lap. That's literally hell. And that was happening every month for two years in a row. And then I went to Brazil and my mom took me to this lady that do the hypnosis regression. And because I'm so stubborn, I, she could not hypnotize me. But she said that she saw my past life and that i was living in a cave long hair shit clothes and um and i uh, i used to work that's what she said and i didn't believe a single word she said yes and um she said that she saw my past life and i was working with plants i was kind of a shaman or something like that and uh i got broken heart and uh, i did some work with the plants to the girl to the guy i don't remember what she said and she saw something black on my on my forehead here and on my liver and uh, she cleaned and she said all that malaria was a karma from the past life i didn't believe a single word she said and she said i can write down that you never gonna get malaria in your life anymore i said okay all right thank you I didn't believe. But you don't believe her. You're Absolutely. Yeah, you're like whatever. Yeah. yeah. Or you're probably thinking this lady's, if she's not crazy, she's a little wacko. Well, you know, like my mom used to go to all those ladies that you read like, palms and you know, like and, mystics, like spiritual yeah, mystics, yeah. like, like yeah. 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 I'm. I'm. Uh, I, I. You know, like to me, I. I do not believe in everything, but I do not doubt nothing. To that time, yeah. 
that time that was my mojo i don't believe everything but i now i do don't know doubt or nothing because believe it or not then i came back to indonesia not long after i arrived i was sick again and i sent an email i was in padan sent an email to my mom said mom tell your friend that she's full of shit. i'm sick again and she replied to me the day after said she said that to to you to do no work that's not malaria and it actually was not i was just sick yeah. and since then i haven't gotten malaria again wow so then my mojo become i do not believe in everything but i do not doubt or nothing okay you're open-minded yeah well okay so back to because that's kind of a big question for people out here especially americans westerners what's the malaria like you know what's the malaria like you know i've been out here I know in the Mentorwise, and I actually went on a few of these Surf Aid International things where they, they did some work with the local villages and trying to eradicate malaria. And I'm, but again, I'm no expert, but um, the malaria here is not an issue. Well, n nowadays it's not anymore because uh, first thing for people to understand how you get malaria. There is this female mosquito. Let's say you, Scott. You are in crisis now. You are sweating, you are shivering, you are feeling shit, all the headache, all the symptoms of malaria. If a female mosquito come and bite you, she have to develop the, the virus on, on the mosquito itself and take days, I guess a week or 10 days. And then it, the same mosquito come and bite me and my immune system is down, I might got malaria. Yeah. So it's not that easy. But because here was a fucking, you know, like malaria resort, and our immune system was as weak as I could be, so that's how we got it the first time. But if you do got malaria, you, you know, man. Yeah. You never felt as sick and tired and terrible in your life that's the worst thing it can happen to a human being yeah. if, even so that people actually die you know so how we got rid of the malaria actually it's not hard you're here and it's not just to promote but have you seen a mosquito no we have when rain we have the midgets which bites you it's so tiny but that is not malaria no mosquito yeah we do not have mosquitoes anymore around the surfing village area because it's all grass and they do not leave the shells with the rain and the, the leaves on top and the wild grass that's perfect ground to breed the mosquito we do not have any mosquitoes sure if you go and because we start to do that the thing is for the locals for the indonesians to get malaria they get really sick but to us because we never experienced that is i would say it's like eight times worse we got way sicker than they do because yeah. they kind of already on their dna or something mm -hmm. like that so they got really sick they some people even die but they, i i see it happening they got malaria they uh, pretty much function we men when we when i was got malaria when mario got malaria you are literally tripping for three days after you and that's what happened here we the the, the local doctor they give you an injection and then after years i find out the injection is just vitamin pure vitamin and they give you a bag of a cocktail of medicine one for the headache one for open your appetizer so you can eat uh, it's a cocktail and one is for the malaria itself there is a like 10 kind of different um, pills you take it and that's why we are doing on the third day you actually start to come to your sense and say oh how sick i am because during those three days you are tripping man you absolutely tripping as sick as you are you don't even make sense how sick you are it's just a nightmare so nowadays to anyone here getting malaria i would say it's easier a coconut fall in your head yeah which you, is gonna kill you anyway yeah it never happened and uh but man if your coconut fall in your head 
your time is up. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The chance is like, you know. So, so you and Mario, you've built your first structure. You've got a toilet. Nando, your brother, and Mario's, you've had your first guests out here. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's time to expand your buildings. And, and are you thinking about marketing? Like, a, a, at what point are you like, we need to get some friends out here to start paying to be here and so that that now now that you mentioned all him that was 2006 so they came here but the thing was the 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 four of them including my brother they came to stay 21 days and i have the boat so we have to go to tell pick them up they fly from padang to tell there is a little airport there I, I fl i've flown in there yeah, yeah. and now uh, we pick them up and eight ten hours later we brought them here and to go now we go to the left here on the on the island we are looking at it's five minutes on the speedboat on my boat it took half an hour yeah but man they stayed 21 days and 21 days past was firing for 21 days on our we didn't go anywhere so and my brother the older guys left after 21 days my brother is stay and uh so this Tassiano guy, his friend, our friend from Brazil, when he went back to Brazil, he said, man, Paul and Mario, they found Nirvana. And Mario's cousin and his friend that was living in Australia, both Brazilian, when they went back to Australia, also Paulo and Mario found Nirvana. We didn't know that. They were saying that. And um, my brother, my brother was a bank manager, man. And when he came, Mario's asked me how long your brother is going to stay said he said six months but i don't think he can handle for a month six months later my brother was saying bye to us he said, okay guys see you next year and mario goes like i couldn't believe that he would hang hangs handle six months but he did he loved it and Mario said well hang on your brother is coming next year so yeah for six months so yeah six months six days my brother he will come as long as he wants so well my that's gonna become a business might as well he become a partner I said all right you ask him so my went to Manar dad said you want to become a partner I said oh, of course so he went back to Brazil and, and does that include like so is Mario thinking hey he can be the business guy like he's gonna be the guy with does the books and does the spreadsheets because he's a bank manager he's got experience managing finances yeah is that what the thought was probably but uh and, and was there going to be monies involved yeah too? that's the main reason because we didn't have any money man you know so the money we we made out of this four gas which was not much we start to buy wood to build the restaurant and when uh, mario asked about he want to become a, a partner mario actually put a price on it he said fifty thousand dollars so now I'll say, okay, I have apartment building where I live in Brazil, in Sao Paulo City. I'm, I'm going to put to for sale and I give $50,000. And I already have a friend that I want to buy it. So it was already set up for this sale. This is Mario or Fernando? Fernando, not okay. really, my brother. And uh, so he went back and said, I, I, I'm going to do the proper deal with my, uh, my friend to sell and send you guys fifty thousand dollars to become a partner and it's a and it's equal partnership one two three no no that was like uh mario offered ten percent ten percent and you so it's you and mario are half and half and now fernando's in for ten percent yeah. for fifty thousand yeah 45 45 and now that is ten percent so, so now you have working capital to build out the facility in theory yes in, in theory, theory <laughs> because uh he didn't have them sold the apartment yet but then why we did me and mario we hire like half of the village to build it two bungalows we bought a engine a proper engine to a generator generator yeah. to and a dynamo to make it power and all the cables and electricity and how did you get that capital to pay for all we that? didn't we Again, well, you're borrowing. Yeah, no, no. We were promising to pay. Promising to pay. Yeah. yeah. Borrowing. Yeah. And uh, we, half of the and village you're promising somebody in Padang. Yes, like because a hardware store or whatever. Yeah, we, our good friend Charlie, that 
Okay, no. Charlie was your friend in Padang. Yeah, and we usually to buy stuff, very little stuff from him. And we told him, so look, that's what's going to happen. Can we get it? But we're going to pay for sure. He trusts us. Okay. And But the scene, the worst part was the guys from the village because we have like like 20 guys working here as a team. There was the team of concrete. There was a team of wood. There was a team of uh, of um, the pipes and stuff. There was three teams. It was like 20 plus people working here. Nobody was getting paid. All promising that we are going to pay. So, and there was an issue with the guy that wanna buy the apartment to get the money, and the money was never coming. And uh, me and Mario were in a situation that we literally, man, now it's sort of speech, looking to each other, man, they gonna kill us. Literally, they gonna kill us because half of the village were working and we are getting wood and the, and the roof and everything even the cement here and the the labor from all of the villages and the money never came and on the last minute and, and you were promising this the whole time don't worry it's coming it's coming it's coming and never came and these guys are getting more and more angry and they're they're fed up with you. They don't believe you anymore. Well, they 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 had not not option. They must be, but they already start to you know, so so and yeah. and now we 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 were like uh, confident to them, but we are doubting, you know. Yeah. But we could not tell them. Yeah. And we they gonna kill us. They were going to kill us. Yeah. But then eventually the money. Was it hard to walk back into the village like? to just go get food and provisions was it well did you see all the eyes on you exactly and um well, well they were here every day man they yeah. don't even need to go to the, vi right. the village you are coming here to they work. continued to work yeah and eventually on the last minute my brother got the money and he managed to send and then we have to open a bank account in padang and then we you know so we need to open a bank account and uh, let me ask you this when you tell the guys hey we've got to go to padang to open a bank account where they going well these guys are never coming back well you know or did mario stay here no uh, yeah probably i don't remember exactly but um we didn't have that issue but probably that was running in their minds of course but uh, and then I was oh, since we're gonna do that, might as well open the business because we're gonna start. We have our first booking already with the pro surfers, with Ricardo Borghi, the photographer. He came here. Who, uh, who was it? Ricardo Borghi. Uh -huh, he's a Ricardo professional Borghi. Photo photographer. Yeah. He came, why we are doing all that? He came here. We are building the restaurant. He came here with two professional guys, and a well, guy that I love, one of the most, and then he ripped the most. I forgot his name. His name just pop out of my mind. Anyway, I will remember. And um, <clears throat> so the guys were coming, and they are professional. Ripping. Bernardo Peg music. Yeah. They're all great, sir. And Fabio Govea. Oh, ah, ah. You know, and, 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 and even Danilo Grillo is the best yeah. uh, to be rider in Brazil. Yeah. And uh, they all are coming with the photographer, professional. And, uh, man, when they arrive, we are putting the last lamp bulb we still working all that time on this main building here yes the main building that has the kitchen and the hangout area so you have to buy all that you know so the 50 grand of, Na of nardelli is just gone refrigerator everything yeah. you you everything. name it yeah. the cables and pay the labors and everything yeah. and build the bungalows and blah 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 so they came and they made a movie they called pasty and uh, it's from hang loose it's mm -hmm. like a the billabong in brazil you know mm -hmm, yeah and and from that uh people start to arrive at men uh, sometimes out of nowhere they were in tell we have to pick them up or they they were in years <coughs> and somehow there was a ladder saying look there's guys in years they want to come and somehow we managed to find a boat every single group from padan to here we didn't have like um, an agent, we didn't have a, a, a booking agent, we didn't have a surf guide, and we are doing all. We are building, doing the paperwork, 
and taking the guy surfing. We were doing them all, me and Ardell and, and, and Mario. And um, and that's how it started, man. And every single rupiah that came, we were putting back on the business. It takes three to four years. Every year when we finish the season in early November, we go, okay, okay, this guy was paid, yeah, this one, did, no, 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 yeah, no, okay, next year, we're gonna pay them. For four years, it was like that. I think on the fourth or, or fifth year, this guy paid, yeah, everybody, everybody was paid. Hang on, there is $400 here. Let's do it again. We did three times. Everybody was paid, and our, our visas were paid. So, hang on, but it's $400. Something is wrong. It took us like half an hour to realize that was the profit. $400. So it took you three or four years just to break even and have a little teeny, teeny bit of profit, $400. Yes. I, four to five to have $400 as a profit. We didn't even know what that was. Yeah. So we took 45, 45% and 10% in our belly. And since then, the profit goes up and up and up and up and up and up and every time just investing on the surfing village. So every time the gas, we, we have, a, I would say 80% returning gas. And every year they come and there is something new or better, never worse. And we try at least, you know, yeah. until the COVID came, which absolutely, we are going to, we actually broke broke yeah we, no. we, we should close the doors man, close you yeah. know because um this kind of business was first it was not never intent to make money it was just our lifestyle and um and the money we made it all those years after we start doing profit keep in mind that we run from april to october november december january february march five months a year we do not open so we have to survive with the money we made during the season and that was pretty much like struggling all the that was a couple of years or three years before before covid we are okay we have money enough to even go on a good restaurant or or, or travel mm -hmm. you know and and then so so things were okay before, was okay. before COVID. Like when the COVID came, we are kind of lucky because COVID came in November, December when we just finished the season. So I went back. I was now I, 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 with my daughter and my mom in Bali you know, on the off season, and um, Cam Locke's brother was the manager. So during COVID, which was November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June the money of surfing village finish because we are using the deposit of the 2020 of the guests to pay the two securities and yeah two people working here yeah one in land and one one girl in, in, in yeah. the kitchen half day june 2020 the money ran out yeah and can call me said man what's the plan b because we don't have any money we're gonna close the doors we're gonna go everything go rotten nobody knew when the the world would open yeah and i said oh look i'm gonna contact the the returning guests we have a returning group like you yourself scott you're a returning guest and hank yeah yeah guys are returning guests but we have a group as a core of a returning group yeah. that came here that year is going to be 10 years in a row. Yeah. So I'm going to, they are from Melbourne. So I'm going to contact them. And Cam was freaking out. He's Aussie guy too. And he going, no, I'm not going to ask anything. No, let me handle. So I contact them and explain the situation. Look, we broke. And uh, would you guys willing, I'm not asking to borrow money, but are you guys willing to pay half of your next trip? You guys already paid the deposit. Are you guys willing to pay half of the trip? Even then, that time, June 2020, nobody knew when the world were going to open. Yeah. Are you guys willing to pay half of the trip so you can help us not shut down the whole place? And the answer I had to them was like, Paulo, we are really, really sorry to get to the point that you ask. We should offer you first that's the response ah, so yeah. they said we wish we could have 
offered you the money first. It's We're sorry that you had to get to this place to ask us. Of course we want to help you. A week, that's exactly, a week later, we have the half of 12 guys package in the bank, which made us survive until the end of 2020. January or March 2021, now, still COVID, nobody could go anywhere. The, their money finish. No more money. Their money is done. Yeah. So what are we going to do? So I start to contact people like you, Scott. I didn't contact you, but I contact people that they were coming here for eight, ten yeah. years as a returning guest. And I said the same thing. Are you willing to pay? Even though, again, nobody knew when the world, war, yeah. the world would open. And every single one I contact, they, here, Paulo, here. We don't want to lose that place here. Boom, 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 boom. So we managed the whole 2021 like that. 2022, we start to get some bookings and deposit because they were feeling the world was going to open. And we used the money. To Plus, everyone, I'm sorry to interrupt, but everyone was excited about finally getting back to traveling. You know, we were all freaking out. We all wanted to go travel again. And... There was reports of guys that were stuck out here at Nias and at Kandui that were scoring out of their brains. And that just fueled all of us as surfers. Like that was the dream to be stuck here, you know? And so that helped. Absolutely. Even Bruno, we, we, we post on our Instagram, our Facebook, Bruno and, 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 and Conrado and his friend, they fucking were scoring, man. Scoring, passing, <laughs> alone, there was nobody around. So yeah, everybody was stoked to come, but there, there was a situation because all the money from those gas we already used. Yeah, you had front, you had the money fronted, and you had used it all. So all you're still kind of at zero. You're still pretty much a destitute situation. Well, it gets worse because every normal season we close in November, open in March, in April. But we arrive, usually arrive in, in March and it start to, you know, you have to change the roof or wood or the engine, something wrong, and, yeah. and you know. But the infrastructure costs that always peak up and sneak up on you. Exactly. So that was almost three years, man, three years. And, and we need to open. The guys already paid. They are coming. There was only five guests on the first trip. They already paid for so we have to come and open the surf village to them. But to open the surf village to them, we have to, man. You need fuel. Fuel, man. We have 12 rooms, 12 big mattress. Nine of the, 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 the mattress were re eaten by rats. Oh, no. The bungalows have no roof, pretty much. We have to redo the roof. The deck was falling apart. We have to change the wood and all the cables were rust the two engines and the two dynamos were, were broke broken and so we have to fix the surfing village to them to come we didn't have the money on top of that in the 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 the, the, the charter boat that bring you guys in and out that belongs to charlie in padang he did not have the money to fix the boat the two speed boats we have here that we gave to the locals and we rent for them so they have make it a business out of it. They didn't have the money to fix the speedboat. So now everything is broken. Everything Everything's broke. broken. Nobody had the money. We didn't have the money to fix surfing village itself. And the guys, the first five guys are on their way. Yes. Plus we have to put the, the guys to work and buy food and fuel. But we have to fix the surfing village first. We have how did you get the money? So look what we have to do to open for five guys, which is already uh, losing money in any situation, normal situation. <coughs> we have to fix the surfing village itself, need the money. We need to fix the two speed boats. We need to fix the Indodua, the big... The big, the big ferry that brings people yes, out. Yes, and they had the money. We have to pay the works and buy the food and the fuel. Again, we start to contact the guys or turning gas that come ahead to pay ahead. And, 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 and on paper, it was absolutely impossible to open. But we did open. And until today, 
on this very moment we still on the no ball that finally is getting smaller from all the depths from using the uh, the money I had mm -hmm. but I guess we are not the, on the only business yeah dealing with that yeah so many of the the operators they, they actually closed the so door. how did you how did you pull off uh, paying for the infrastructure to be updated and for the season to open because it wasn't just the five guys you, you have to open for the season exactly so how did you is that just more um, promising exactly. more promising in Padang and people were taking care of you and you're still so okay. what we did we get the money ahead from the guys that were coming yeah and we have debt with our our suppliers yeah until this very yeah Charlie day. and those people everyone yeah. even and if the locals here with the few mm -hmm. because uh honestly scott i don't know if you know the information but this business which operates seven months a year and close five the revenue the money that comes is more than half a million dollar per season but we spend like 90 90 percent for the cost to run it yeah on a good season we might make 50 grand yeah. as a profit yeah. and we have partners to share so that was not never intent to make money. yeah the margin is very small very small the margin on the cost is very small it's the, the cost is really high yeah we are in the middle of nowhere yeah but that's why it's paradise because it was if, if, if easy access and anyone could come that would be crowded why don't we and i know you've thought about this so i apologize for asking you this but why don't we stay open for the off season for fishing because the fishing is pretty incredible right absolutely and there is waves too and there's waves off season waves yeah. for sure but we do have inquires to like that is in november there is three guys want to come and in december there is like a whole group want to come in january there is like a three couples want to come that's not enough no man we, we you need to be money. full we need yeah. like we are now like we have 12 12 12 10 11 12 12 12 and the first group we we, we charter the, the the ferry the boat the, sh the charter boat to bring to get out, out here from Padang. So when the, the first boat come with the first group it won't go back empty uh-huh so we lose money and the last group when they they come to bring to take back to put down the last group it came empty there is no more gas on the boat yeah but we still pay the same price I see, I see, yeah so we already lose on the the first and the last group yeah and if you open for a few people and there is holes in them in, in, in between we pay for them to come yeah so we cannot do it yeah we cannot do it but again man uh the thing i learned is like this i saw i was from the very beginning of this podcast i said that i was searching for paradise to to glam and yes i did found it and you can feel that now we are in heaven pretty much yeah i used to say to everyone that you know even today that happened the guy like oh man today was like a dream said man here is one of the few places on earth that when you go to your bungalow you set up your bed your pillow your mosquito net and then you sleep when you wake up in the morning after you wake up the dream start because we are in and i feel like that we are in heaven but man to achieve heaven you gotta go through hell man that's my experience and that's my 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 input of anyone can reach their own paradise their own heaven but you m probably and most likely go through hell and even now today that we are in heaven in paradise every now and then the devil himself come knock on the door hey Apollo, come to have a coffee and a cigarette and they do and they leave so it's not guaranteed that it's all gonna be flowers and and incense and and you know all good it's still shit happen yeah. big time but i guess it's part of you know give value to what we have you know yeah we've said a lot we've had a a long chat 
a long discussion. What have we left out? What about Mario? Where's what? What happened to your partners? And your brother is still here as a partner. Yeah. It's you. And by the way, if you don't want to talk about that, that's fine. I don't want to get too into your business. I'm just. We did mention Mario, so I'm just wondering what what what, what became of Mario. I've never met him. Man, I left over a, a lot. I just trying to that's okay. make this, it quick. This is good. Well, Mario, Mario. So he he become a brother, a friend, a brother, a partner, and. Me, he, and Nardelli, we made that happen somehow, without money, without borrowing money, through COVID and everything. And, uh, but then Mario, he had a girlfriend that came here in the very early years. She actually took the photos from the very beginning. And uh, he ended up marrying Michelle, the wife. And uh, they have a, a daughter. And then I have my Indonesian girl to do we have a daughter Luana now that she's 10 but um, Luana's mother passed away when she was six months old and and Mario were here and have another baby and another one so I have three kids Mario have three kids and I have Luana and I brought my mom I import my mom from Brazil yeah. to Indonesia to help me look after my daughter and you know Mario's and Michelle's kids start to grow and they want to put them in college and Mario also had a dream to live on a, on a, on a catamaran sailboat. So he sold his share to this girl, Sandra, that now she's the partner. And, um, and uh, he went back to Brazil, was living on a bus on his land in Bahia until he managed all his money to go to Tahiti and he bought a, a boat there and uh, he's living now his another dream he's living on a boat on a sail catamaran boat with his daughter with the wife with his and, three kids? and and the two two sons and one daughter wow that's amazing Good and for he's him. living another dream that's cool and my brother is still here i am still here so we are the originals and you know we are here for ni 19 already 19 years and we have another 31 years to go. Because <laughs> I ran to the I land for 50. So, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, I, thank you for sharing this, this story, this origin story of Surfing Village and this fascinating... It's such a um, rags-to-riches type of story. It's such a hard work pays off kind of story. It's such a story that I think um, a lot of people can relate to. A lot of people can relate to, you know, and, and a lot of people admire. A lot of people understand the hard work and determination and sort of a, you mentioned a stubbornness, you know, I would suggest that there's a stubbornness with you to put up with a lot of shit to, to be where you are now. And it seems like you're in a pretty good place. Well, uh, Scott, to tell you the truth, somebody, I think I read or heard somebody saying that, um, maybe Bob Marley said, I don't know, that um, you only know how strong you are when you are, the only option you have is to be strong. So I pretty much have no way out, man. Or I make it happen, I would die. I have no even means or to go back to Brazil. I have to make it happen. I have no option. So I went to the impossible to make it happen. Sure, that was my passion, my dream, and I have to to fight for it. And I have no other option. Because, sorry to whoever done that, but to me, it's too easy. If you you get the, the money, you come to Indonesia, find a, 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 a land, and you have all the, your friends and investors we saw a lot of money, they find a place, ah, oh, it's beautiful, let's build a resort here. And boom, another two months the resort is done. And it's all about money. So, Surfing Village was never about money or building a resort, you know. That was our lifestyle that become the business. What I see is like they make a business to become their lifestyle. And what actually make me proud is like people like yourself Scott you guys come you guys don't feel like a guest 
you feel like you belong here. You feel like you're not coming. Oh, I'm going to this resort. You know, uh, I don't know. I'm uh, actually uh, going to ask you. I'm going to Palos. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to Palos to go gonna, surfing. Uh, no, I'm interviewing you. I'm okay. going to ask you a question because that's how I feel. I don't think you go like I'm going on a, on a resort in Tello. You said, man, I go see my friends in Tello, you know, because that's what happened, man, and, and that's organic happened, naturally happened. You guys and you even yourself, first time you come on the very first day, you came as a guest, but you never leave as a guest. You leave as a friend or some, in some cases, as a part of the family, and that's our lucky to have what we have because and I keep telling our team because I'm not doing that on my own I have a, a team around me and they are all great look Gabriel Gabriel you guys cannot see but he's the one of the original guys that came here and I mean the table we we eat down there Gabriel made it you know so everybody come and if they love it nobody's making money here man yeah. you know from the boss to the, the surf guys they don't get paid yeah. they try to sell their photos and videos to make a living but everybody have a great time they every even the managers Locke and Theo they they have a almost like a, a, a symbolic uh, salary yeah but they all live here they all eat sleep well and surf on crowded waves and um, they love to be here and that's our difference nobody's here because they find a job or they want to make money they all love to be here and that is kind of a key of a secret to be successful as a business because when you guys come you guys can feel the energy the vibe yeah. and I keep telling people like you can have the money you can offer a better better accommodation you can offer a better uh, food you can even f offer with money a better the, a better uh, um, the whole deal you can be better yeah. but it doesn't matter how much money you have or how much you willing to have the vibe you cannot buy or working hard to have a vibe yeah. or you do or you don't yeah. and that's what actually to me make it the surfing village is special you guys more than the okay the waves all of them can be world-class on their days and even if they are not they are fantastic they are all pretty much uncrowded waves on every single day you surf high quality waves uncrowded and we are in 2024 we are now in the early 70s yeah. and uh, they all love their lifestyle so they are working here I'm working they yeah. are working but we are yeah there's this there's a spirit throughout the staff that starts at the top and that has just filtered down organically that is um, like you said like uh, you know it's it's like friendship you know what I mean? And we're looking at, you know, Paulo had mentioned um, perfect empty waves. For the record, the last two days have been perfect <laughs> empty waves. We're waiting for a swell. It's four to five feet out here. In California, this would be called four to five feet. Yeah, yeah. We're not even surfing because we're waiting for the eight to 10 foot waves that are coming in two days. No. And uh, it's pretty incredible, you know? To, to me, it is, it's still. You yeah. know, like uh, I still, uh, Scott, I swear to God, every day I wake up, I walk from my, my bungalow. Before we didn't have bungalows for ourselves, we sleep in the restaurant. And uh, I walk from my bungalow to the restaurant and I look around every single day. I said, How? How? I didn't got money, borrow money from anyone, from the bank, anything. And I, 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 I look and I think that's a beautiful place. But more than that, and now, uh, you know, like when, when the guests leave, we make the photo from the stair, and um, they, we, they got the t-shirt from the surfing village, which we are not, you cannot get anywhere, you have to come together. And, uh, but to be able to get the, 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 the shirt, they must write on the guest book. They can write anything, like 
Oh, uh, that was great. Thank you. You already got your shirt. Oh, the wave sucks. And sign, you got your shirt. <laughs> so when you read, and we never read the, the, the guest book until they leave. Yeah. When you get the guest book and read it, man, pretty much 99.9% .9 say, oh yeah, fun time, best holiday of my life, and I got the best wave of my life. But everyone, right? But what make that place different is you guys. It's not, not you, Paulo. It's you guys. Me, Loki, you, Nardelli, Gabera, Bruno, Conrado, <coughs> um, Rosana. Rosana, and <coughs> Nika, all the team. I'm going to uh, yeah. uh, forget people's yeah. names, yeah. but uh, Z, everyone. Yeah. So they, they actually really do appreciate it because we are all different people with different character. But we have one thing in common. We all love to be here. And this love, this energy, this vibe is what the experience the guests come because uh, look oh uh, it's got it like you you go back to california and you maybe next year you go to a friend of yours and go like look i'm going to indonesia next year and they go oh yeah right on scott where are you going you're going to to lombok at desert point or Uluwat or mentawai macaronis uh kandui where are you going so now i'm going to tell her. And your friend goes like, Tello, I think I heard about Tello, uh, but um, where are you going to surf? Ah, I'm going to surf past Loban, Nagas, Rahasia, Lado Lado, uh, Tantras, Mibis, what the f fuck, no, I never heard about those waves. Even if I Google, I will not find it. But where are you going to stay there and surf those waves? And you go like, ah, I'm going to stay on this Brazo camp. So if your friend is willing to come, or he's crazy, <laughs> or he's very open-minded and that's the kind of guests we get well look i mean you probably know this but when i talk about this place see i've been to the mentawais 10 times i've been to uluwatu i've been to bali i don't want to surf with crowds <laughs> I, i'm not going to put 30 hours into a travel day to go surf with 25, 30 people that are frothy. Now, I think if there's a place for that, and I did it already, and, and now I'm, my time is to surf with nobody around. I don't want to travel forever and spend money and surf with 35 people. I just don't want to do that. I won't do it. And so that's why, um, well, one of the reasons why this is such a great situation. Yeah, you know? man, you see, like, like you just mentioned before, we are looking for four foot perfect offshore empty we we have 12 guests our staff there's another at least eight surfers as a staff and yesterday and today we are watching empty rolling perfect waves so i used to say so paulo why you, you don't go surf on the first day second day when the guests are here why you don't go surf and uh, I have to tell the truth because I'm spoiled, <laughs> and uh, and I can see you, Scott. You got spoiled, yeah, oh yeah. Because we surf all every day, many hours alone, and when we look at that, said, so, "Oh no, it's not good enough." <laughs> <laughs> Which it is. It's, it's it's pretty fun. I got a sore back. I'd probably I'd probably look be at that one. Look at that one. Oh, oh it's just it's peeling, and it's perfect. Going so fast. Uh, it's perfect. It's look, perfect. Clean. It's been glassy all day. Uh, yes. Yeah. I might go. We should go on the on the afternoon so yeah. we warm up for the soil. That probably is gonna hit tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Swell tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So um, I I just want to say thank you for you to appreciate yeah what we got. And well, uh, look, I told you last time last year, you know, Hank and I we ha we have photos of us coming out of the tube and high fiving each other, my son and I. You know, and that's like. And he told me this morning, you know, he's like, Dad, I love this place. I love you so much, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm going to cry. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. All right. Well, look, Paulo, uh, thank you so much for being on the Boardroom Podcast. I really appreciate uh, learning about your origin story in this place. And um, more will be revealed. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you, too, brother.
Guess I need that city life. It sure has lots of style. But pretty soon it wears me out. And I have to think to smile. I'm thankful for my country home. It gives me peace of mind. Somewhere I can walk alone and leave myself behind. You're picking someone else's patch And if you go down there anyway It very seldom lasts I found that out once long ago And it sure got me confused I still don't know which way to go To lose those old spud blues me 